a couple of years ago while working on the uh, Jetronic circuit on the DeLorean. Um, Elvis and I were outside using this oscilloscope to set that circuit up and the oscilloscope caught fire and it turned out to be one of those uh, capacitors, those line capacitors that goes across uh, the, the the terminal for the AC. I've, I've since fixed that, but the oscilloscope hasn't worked right since that fire. I documented some stuff uh, just over a year ago. I, I hadn't really been making videos to capture these projects back then, and I had some other obligations and life got in the way. I really hadn't been working on this scope. And I had bought the hand tech that had replaced us, the, the 5072. But now it's time to get this Tektronix out of storage, clean it up, and see what's going on, why this oscilloscope isn't working right, and document this correctly. And I have, I have everything I need for this scope. I view this thing forever. This was my primary oscilloscope. Uh, even this knob that came off, I have to repair. It's, it's sitting in that plastic bag. It's just fine. Um, my uh, probes from Conrad, that was my uh, favorite store in Stuttgart for electronics. Those are some Conrad probes. The original instruction manual and the uh, service manual that has all of the schematics required to do this job. Also, last date of calibration is um, February 28th, 1986, and expiration warranty April of 1987. It's probably due for a checkup as well. The removal of two screws on the plastic cover released the back shell. This thing was designed for service. It's very easy to work with. Another screw that secures the oscilloscope into the chassis is found here on the under housing forward of the whole unit, followed by the singular side screw on the rear. At this point, the top piece, the top bag, um, comes right off. It's, it's held in uh, by pressure here or it sort of slides in the mechanism and it just comes out. So it lays here off like that. Push from the back, the oscilloscope slides forward a little. Obviously, uh, this bar will have to be adjusted so the scope could come out of the chassis. And then it's just pulled straight out, ready to go. So the first thing I do is I'll go and I'll take the chassis and put that stuff off to the side because I'm not going to need it anymore. I'll put those screws back that I just took out so they don't get lost. You lose these things, it's just a pain. So I put them back. I know where they are. There they are, they're sitting in there. No worries. The other one goes right here, the standoff right here on the bottom. And we're done. Let everybody read this sticker for a moment. This is a CRT, so you do anything wrong here and you die. Just pointing that out. Like everything else that I work on in these videos, it's anywhere from 120 volts AC to like 700 volts DC and mistakes are generally lethal. This oscilloscope is no exception, especially since it uses a CRT, the voltages are generally pretty extreme. I've removed the metal cage from the power supply, if only so we could see the capacitor uh, to which I was referring to. This is completely de-energized, hasn't been turned on in a year. This is like one of the only times I get to enjoy doing this with a screwdriver. We can see this X2 capacitor way down here in the back by the uh, power switch. And that's about as good as a view as you're going to get because the only way you're going to get to it is by removing this. And I'll show you right here that what we're looking at is the, the power plug and fuse assembly. So all of that had to be removed to get to that capacitor. Uh, that work has since been done. The, all of the grime and whatever has been cleaned off the circuit board, though you could still see on this cable right here that goes to the CRT and it's still some you know some 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 soot from that event but that's about it everything else is cleaned up I just wanted to take that that cover off so you could see that the other reason for taking off the cover is an, an inspection of the uh, the oscilloscope itself I'll point out that aside from the problem which I will I will demonstrate once I power it on there are no other problems itself there's no power supply problems with the CRT uh, all of the other functions work fine. There's no, I, I, I'm making assumptions here, but I'm saying that there, the, the issue that I'm seeing doesn't lend itself towards an issue with the power supply. So I don't see myself having this open and exposed during work if I don't have to. That said, I'll also point out that there's a lot of original electrolytic capacitors here 
while I have this open, maybe since they're all the same value, it wouldn't kill me to take some ESR measurements. And so this is a multi-can ESR measurements too. If I find a smoking gun here, you know, maybe I could stop and evaluate that as I do with every other project. This project should be no different. <clears throat> I continue on and I'll show that the, the board is, is very well laid out. There's more than enough room for the components so they're not on top of each other. The book documents everything and believe it or not, there's not a surprisingly large amount of stuff. And uh, one board is removed. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that it comes out of this detachable unit, right? And it sits right there. Um, then we have a couple of other boards that are not as easily removable, but accessible. Uh, some ICs under there, not as much, but considering what it could be like, I'm not really complaining as we work through the troubleshooting of this unit. I should also point out that what we're seeing right here under the high voltage is really nothing more than it looks like we have this is the flyback transformer and we have the uh, doubler or tripler right and coming right off of that uh, tripler is the the positive directly into the CRT so we've got that circuit and some supporting circuitry and then on the entirely other side is obviously the AC rectifier DC side of the power supply. So a couple different things going on here. Again, I'll point out that I don't have any uh, 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 CRT related issues. Some, you know, the artifacts in the screen that would say that we have voltage problems with CRT. And I, and I, and I wouldn't say that uh, the issue is DC related, so to speak. Uh, there seems to be a very good way to test the stability of the rails on this as I've read, so that'll be a test that'll be done. But still, again, let's get into these capacitors right quick. Also, I'll stress that now is the time to do this. This thing's been off forever. Everything's completely discharged from the CRT down to all the electrolytics. And this device is perfectly safe uh, under this specific condition. I would encourage people who are working on this uh, to use the, uh, the discharge method for the CRTs. Obviously, they would know what they're doing if they're getting into something like this. And then obviously, uh, you know, discharge these electrolytic capacitors. I don't know if this unit has some sort of uh, high resistance uh, bleed down circuitry. If you leave it plugged in and powered off, I can't be sure. I've just been going through one by one on this power supply and observing the measurements. Not so much the value, so to speak, which obviously I'm looking at, but, you know, seeing one that's completely off from the others and also looked at that big electrolytic one which seemed okay as well so i've been through all of these electrolytics in the power supply i didn't find anything that gave me any cause for alarm and quite frankly i didn't think i would but this is the best opportunity to do so you know the blue ones down here that one there this big can over here there all of those right there and the ones sneaking under there were all taken care of they were all looked at so, uh, due diligence. So, I'm happy with that. They'll be following the book, obviously, to look at uh, DC power, which is probably going to be one of the fundamental tests of this unit. You can see right off the bat where the, the cage comes down, the white line following the cage, uh, just off to the left of it. We can see the voltages right after what, what looks like possibly diodes, maybe some sort of protection right there. But you can see the, the neg 86, the 5, the positive 86. Uh, the 30 and I think it's 100 up there so the test voltages are there um, they come off little test points there as well yes yeah, probably on the on the outer side of that so we're gonna have stuff to work with and we're, we're gonna start our test regimen after I assemble uh, this high voltage box yeah I'm not gonna be working around the flyback if I don't have to I'll also point out the only adjustment that needs to be made from within this restricted area it has been done so that the the pot is situated sideways and is done from the side of the chassis so you can actually do it outside so um, there is no need to be in this unit when it's energized one more shot before I assemble this is the side that uh, sat about a centimeter or so from the capacitor so this is what the carnage looked like when the short happened on the mains voltage I'll leave that there sort of a reminder so now I've got the cover secured back on top as it should be. Uh, the circuit board has been reinstalled. Till there's a really good reason to be under this one, I've also reinstalled the bottom cover as well. 
We're going to forego the use of a Variac here since this is not ancient equipment that I've never dealt with. Uh, this is one of my pieces of gear. However, since it's technically considered broken gear to be repaired, it's going to be dealt with on the isolation transformer. Got the function generator, one kilohertz at one volt. <clears throat> We're going to get this thing turned on for the first time. See what's going on. And immediately the problem is expressed. We can see exactly what it's doing. I have a way around this, by the way. Um, it's worth pointing out that I could change it to Alt and we could see that if I go to B and away from A, it becomes completely usable scope. Right, it literally left it at the problem condition a year later. I'm gonna turn down the intensity. The, 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 fo the purpose of this is to actually get this set up uh, for a viewing on, on this camera. I forgot I have to use B, right? So basically what we have here is this. I have a sine wave arbitrary that, that I got going through here. Horizontal mode is set up to B. Everything works fine. We could see in Alt, uh, when, when A is mixed with B, what, what A is doing, right? Not looking so hot. Sometimes it's good, and, and, and sometimes it's, it's missing, a lot of times missing the mark. And if we just look at it in terms of A, where I would generally find I, myself using this, we could see that this axis is just fine, right? As far as um, amplitude. But on this axis, it looks like there's a, a short <clears throat> of some kind where it lets go, and the resulting value is exactly as demonstrated. And one would ask if the problem is in the time domain, uh, what would happen if we were to uh, adjust it with this? And you can see that there's no change. We can see the change when, when it's not shorting, obviously, but the, the problem itself doesn't correct. So that is the problem in a nutshell with this oscilloscope. Next, we'll get into the troubleshooting portion of this event.